All right, welcome to our live instructional webinar designed to support the school annual online yearbook program. Today, we will be focusing on functions that relate to building activity or candid pages. Um, specifically, we will be reviewing page bleeds and margins, uh, the toolbar design functions, the templates in the program, both regular and click and go templates, um, how to then take any of those, make your own custom templates, and then we'll wrap things up by going over um, some of your theme art that is there. Um, so the first thing that I'll cover here, um, I'm just right in on the designer here. I'm just right on a page. Um, so the first thing we'll go and cover here are, uh, we're going to talk about bleeds and margins. So um, when we talk about bleed in printing, and what we talk about when, when we're talking about, well, we want backgrounds to bleed or we want elements to bleed this off the page. What, what this means in printing is basically um, it's bleed means or having f color that extends beyond the edge of the page. So full color that extends beyond the edge of the page. And why this is important, um, and I'll just pull a shape up here real quick. Oh, I got it down here. So I'm going to push this shape all the way out to our bleed area. Um, so when we're looking at one of our pages, uh, this outer gray area here, this is the bleed area. This red line here, this is our estimated trim line. So this is where your pages are going to be trimmed at or estimated. And, and we say estimated uh, just for the fact there could be up to a one eighth variance, one eighth inch variance here. Um, and what factors in there is, you know, how well the actual trimmer you know, basically it's production variables that play into that estimated line. So it could be, you know, how well the trimmer is operating. Does it have fresh blades? Has it been a while? Um, how, you know, how many copies are in that job? Stuff like that. Um, even all the way down to uh, trim operator, who the operator was in addition. So that's why that is estimated because there's always going to be a little bit of variance. Um, moving on inside here is the blue, this blue line. This is your inside page margins. This is where you're going to want to keep all of your important text and photos within. So when it comes back and coming back to bleed, why is that important? Why would you want to have color extending beyond the edge? Well, it's when you go to have your book trimmed. If you have that color um, extending beyond the edge, it just ensures that when your page is trimmed, you have that nice full color all the way up to the edge. And you're not left with any kind of unsightly kind of white edging or, you know, anything where it doesn't look like the background was extended all the way out. So just wanted to cover that, um, you know, just concept of bleed is just color that extends beyond the edge of the page. And that way, when it goes to get trimmed, nice full color out to the edge of your pages, looks clean, it looks nice and you won't have to be dealing with anything kind of like white edging or um, you know the edge of the paper that you'd see there. Um, so another thing I'll we'll kind of go and talk about here with bleed is if you're setting up collage pages. Um, now you can build pages here in the program just by going to the images tab, finding your, finding your images here and just dragging and dropping them on a page. I placed that one before, but you can just drag them on, drop them, and size, size it like that. So from here, when we're talking about bleed and you're doing collage pages, images that you'll want to pull out to the edge or put out there um, are going to be, when you're putting them out, you're going to look for what open space that you have. So on a photo like this, it works really well if you went out to the side here. I'm going to remove this one. So if we push this out to the edge, what we have being trimmed off here is just a little bit of arm off to the side. The important part, our students' faces are with inside the margins. Nothing's at risk of being trimmed. Same as if we move it over to the inside margin where the gutter is. So just a little bit of arms coming over. But for the most part, our students are right here within the margins. This image is also going to play well at the bottom of a page. If you were to make a collage page and have it extend there, 
Where this one will not work out too well is if we put this up to the top. So here now, while this student has still resting, student on the right here is right up above the margins and also into the trim. And they're resting, or their, their head goes up into the bleed and it's right here on that trim line. Now, if there's a variance in printing, I will put down a guide here and just kind of, now if there was just a little bit of jog in that printing and it got a little more, so we can even take off more of their more of their head. So it's just a thing to watch out for when you're working with your photos or if you, if you do collage pages, um, what works really best is, you know, putting, putting areas of photo empty space, kind of like if all of this photo had this much open space up here and this student was down more, this would be a great photo for the top. But just because they're up here and you may not want to you know, run the risk of having people's heads trimmed off, it's best to kind of keep that either to the, to the inside, the outside, or to the bottom. But just things to look out for while you're building these pages. And that way, you know, you don't have anyone getting chopped off a little more than they want to, um, you know, either upsetting or losing more the importance of the photo. So there we go. Um, we've got our bleed area, our trim, and our inside margin. Uh, next thing I'll go over, and I'm just going to go down through um, I'm going to go through here and go through our menus. And let me zoom in on these just a little bit here. Um, so when we're looking down, just a quick rundown of our toolbar. Um, under File, here's where you're going to find like your Save and Save as Template. Um, also, View PDF is going to be where you can print uh, a preview of the page. Now, save is also a quick option that is right here. And your preview page is also a quick action. This is your PDF it is gonna be right here as well. Under edit, uh, basic formatting, you do have your undo and redo, which those are also quick options right here, little arrows. We have our cut, copy, paste, and delete. If you're familiar with keyboard shortcuts, Control C, Control V works well. If you're on a Mac, this would be Command C, Command V. Um, also under Edit, you're going to find the Change Background menu. I'm going to pull that up here. This is a menu that you can leave up all the time. Um, it's floating. You can move this around. If you don't need it anymore, you can just hit the X to close out of it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close, it, close out of this now, but we will come back later once we get talking about how to apply theme art there. And let's see, also under our edit, sorry, I'm bouncing around here. Um, under our edit, we have find and replace and spelling. These are going to be really good options you will use later when you go to review your pages and getting, getting those ready for submission. Uh, find and replace is just exactly kind of like that. If it find you know finding a word or spe specific spelling, then you can have that changed. You know, change that quickly. Um, now the spelling check. Um, now it's not as robust as something you'd see in Microsoft Word or anything like that. It's it's pretty basic. Um, you know, it's not one thing. It, I mean, it's going to find and give you options on you know misspelled words. Uh, one thing it will not do is it will not check grammar. So you'll need, still need to check grammar going on for that. Um, something else you may need to still, as you're reviewing, is one thing it won't catch is correctly spelled words used in the wrong way. Um, or or if you accidentally, you know, misspelled something but spelled actually a correct, you know, it's another word but spelled correctly. Um, what it's not going to catch is like, there, there, and there, you know, T-H-E-R-E, -E, T-H-E-I-R, and then T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. So it's not going to differentiate between those um, going with the grammar. So definitely run spell check. It'll catch the obvious misspellings. Um, we still suggest putting another set of eyes on that or having someone else review it for you right before you go to submit. Um, then we have our select. So if you just need to select particular things on a page, or if you want to select everything, you can do that. 
or if you wanted just to select and format images, text boxes, shapes, um, selecting incomplete, this may come in handy later when you're reviewing and submitting. Um, it's just going to select and highlight anything um, incomplete on a page, like an unedited text box or an empty photo box. Um, where it's going to help you find locked elements or if you used a particular color or font. Um, going quickly um, down the view menu uh, is where we have hide rulers, hide page margin. Um, I always leave the rulers on, and it's always kind of best to keep the margins on, so you probably won't mess with these. Um, hide grid lines, um, that's the little gray lines you have here on the pages. Um, now you can come here and turn them off, uh, but if you need to toggle between them while you're working on a page, down here in the bottom right of the designer, uh, you're going to have a two button module here. And this button bottom button with the hash marks that is our that's our grid line so we could toggle those on and off and these will definitely help you if um, you know if you need to work on spacing or help with spacing um, as you're moving stuff along here um, another thing that we have is we're getting to oh um, guides so while you're also working, you saw me earlier, um, you know, I pulled down some guides from the top. You can bring in guides in from the side. So if you, this helps with aligning, so you can use these for alignment and distribution if you wanted to. To kind of set up your pages and keep, you know, areas between. Now you can hide those guides. You can lock them in place so you don't move them. Uh, if you need to quickly clear them, you can use the clear guides, do all or just the rows or just the columns. But definitely, um, you know, if you like setting up your own pages, uh, you know, we, of course, we have tons of templates in here in the program that you can drop on. Um, now, if you are like, are someone that likes to go just a little bit extra, throw photo boxes on, size them, um, make your own layout. We have the alignment tools here as far as, you know, guides and grids to help you get the spacing and alignment just right. And let's see, down further, we have our zoom in, zoom out, and fit to window. Those options are right up here along with the page next options here. So if you want to skip a page or go all the way to the back, you can do that up here. Or zoom out, zoom in. Or if we click the drop down, we can choose a percentage or hit it to fit the page. There. Um, see what else is here. Facing and single pages. So this is our page view. Um, one important note about um, the pages here. If you are um, the only advisor working on a page or, or the only volunteer, um, you'll probably most likely always keep it set up in facing pages. Um, going through just because no one else is working on the book. Um, now, if you're an advisor that has a few other people either helping, you know, other volunteers, or let's say that you have students helping um, in that, um, one thing that may come into play is on if they are assigned to the same page or not. So if there's just a few of you, and you know that you're never going to be working on the same page, you can keep it as facing pages. That's fine. Um, just um, what will happen is if you go to work on the same two page spread at the same time as someone else, it could lead to save errors while you're working there. Um, so if you um, know that there might be potential like or let's say that you, you you know you have two different students assigned to, maybe you have one student assigned to the left and a different student assigned to the right-hand page. Um, if you find yourself in that situation, um, have what you would do is have both of those uh, two people switch to a single page view. Um, once it's then into a single page, then once they're both into a single page, Whatever the person on the left is doing over here will then not interfere with whatever the person on the right side, on the other side, is doing, and, and vice versa. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. You know, if you're, 
you know, the loan, the loan person, you know, the sole editor working on this book, keep it as facing pages going through. Or, or if there's just a few of you and you know that you're never going to be working on the same page, uh, facing pages is fine. Um, just if you're in the unsure, you have a lot of staff working on the book, maybe you have someone different assigned to each side, here's definitely have them all switch to single page. That way you can, um, that way it just avoids, the, you know, save errors or anything like that. Okay, and under arrange, here's where we're going to find things like lock and unlock, group and ungroup. Um, align and our alignment options here. Um, so here I'm going to actually do a little copy and paste. So I'm going to highlight these boxes. Now under a range, align horizontally. These options left, center, or right are good for our columns that are here. Now these options for alignment are, are also right here under the arrange drop down. So we then have left, center, and right. Vertically, top, middle, bottom. Actually, I'm going to go back here real quick and I'm just going to do them to the left. Uh, bring everything this way and highlight it. So if we arrange vertically, top, bottom, middle, and these are going to be good for your rows. And again, those options are from the arrange drop down over here as well. So I'll arrange all that. Another menu that can be unpinned and then moved around. Um, up here, uh, as well as what we saw here, there is the group button. So if you want to group those together as one. So up here, then we have the ungroup, which just breaks the grouping. And then you're able to go back to move it singly again. And, oh yeah, um, let me stack, the, I'm gonna change the color of these one here real quick. Okay. And so if, if I select one of these, now under our range, we have a range. So we have options like bring the front, bring forward, send back, send backwards. Um, again, they're right here on these, on this arrange drop down as well. Um, where those could come into play is if you do have a, um, ooh, quick question um, that I saw pop up here. Uh, two quick questions. Uh, the one was back on single page. Can you toggle it left or right? Um, It'll first just jump on to whichever side it goes, but then you could just hit the page next button to go over. Um, also, quick one and getting, I can add in here. Can you also align the column spacing? Um, we have alignment, but we do not have distribution tools. So you can always align it. Um, and then for distribution and that, that's where you'd really kind of use the grids or the guidelines to help with that. Um, now back to our squares here, um, basically what, if you're on a collage page, you can have those options and you can work with sending stuff back, backwards and changing the overlapping on a corner. So I can bring that one to the front and change the overlapping there. All right, so let's see, where are we up to? We've gone over bleed and margins and went through the quickly on just kind of our, here, I'm gonna hit a save point here. Um, okay, so we've gone through the designer basics on all what this is. So let's go down our tabs a little bit. Um, now I'm working here. Um, the first one here is the pages tab, um, much like your page ladder to where, here, okay, I can come back down at this point here. All right, we got our pages tab, which is gonna allow you to navigate to any of the other pages that are here in your book. So this is basically like your page ladder, those right there. Under designs, um, this is where you're gonna find all of the pre-made templates that are in the program. Um, 
So today, since we're doing building activity pages, really good templates to find for this are going to be under Page Surfer. Um, now under Page Surfer, um, you even have quite a few categories here. What is under the Candids um, category? This is some of more are some of our more basic templates that we have. Um, most of these are, you know, mostly either just photo boxes or some just have headings that are here. Um, so I take one of these and just drag and drop it over to the page. So when you bring a template over, um, it'll ask if you want to retain existing content. Um, so here um, I'm going to go ahead and hit no. And when we hit no, it overwrites the page with that, with that new template that we're bringing over. So I'll just show a few examples that are here. Like, like I said, some have boxes. Some, this one has a couple different heading boxes up at the top. So here's a different style that has some stuff in there. Some are just photo boxes there for good candid pages and that. Now, if we go to some of the other categories like clubs and organizations, there are a lot of different neat templates that are in these as well. Just to kind of show you some examples here. So clubs and organizations has a lot. Gallery has tons and tons of stuff um, that might be interesting. <laughs> So top seniors or top grads, or you know maybe that's their favorites and stuff like that. Um, a whole bunch of different neat templates that are throughout here. But definitely, um, really, you know, going through opening then dividers. So a lot of really neat stuff here. So definitely encourage you to take a little bit of time going through through some of these. Um, another thing is down here, we don't have much control over this, but it's the template exchange um, under the community. Sometimes you can really find some different, uh, really neat stuff that some of the other people around the community have set up. I don't know how these templates get here. It must be kind of something kind of higher up with the other version of the program but really neat stuff um, that you can find in here. Um, but I'm going to get back to just our Candace folder, and I'm going to drop on one of our templates here. I'm going to go back and find a basic template. Okay. So here's just our, our basic template here. And you can start with this, um, you know, drop stuff in. Um, now, what if you like? What if you wanted to take one of these templates and make it something your own? Um, we can do that. No part of our template here is anything that is set in stone. So, one other thing I'll show you here. I'm going to take out this top row of boxes. Here, we'll go ahead and save. Now, if I come back to the designs tab here, and this time I'm going to go down into click and go. Now, well, click and go templates are, they're not full page templates like anything that you see in Page Surfer. Click and go templates are smaller little groupings um, of elements that you could toss on the page. Um, so under here, I've got some neat things, cover to cover. It has some neat stuff in it, like little, if I toss one on here, time to remember, something like that. Has some neat stuff. Let's see, what is this? A little quote box. We could stick down in the bottom somewhere. But what I'm looking for here is I'm going to go under headline. There's a whole bunch of different headline styles that's here that we could drop onto the pages. I'm going to take one here, drop it on. Okay. And you know what? I like that. So let's say you found a heading, found something that you like there. 
Um, but you know what? You kind of want to move some stuff around. Um, you know, can I add some other boxes in here? So I'm going to adjust this as high as we can go. And let's say I want to make this box a little bit taller. Maybe I want to bring this one down. And let's say that I want to add something else in this spot. And I'm going to save here real quick. So what can we do else with our template? Well, I'm going to go to the art tab here real quick. Now, if you ever need to add in a different image frame, so under the art tab, we've got different image frames like circles. You can add that in. You know what? I'm going to take that out. And tell you what, I'm going to size this one a little larger. And I'm going to do a copy and paste. I'm going to copy this a couple more times. Let's highlight those. Let's go back to a range. We'll put it up to the top. Okay. And I'll get those centered as best as I kind of can for now. And okay, I'm noticing that the photo box, the rest of the photo boxes have um, a, a border around it. And that's what we call a stroke here. Um, so if those have a two point, if I look with this selected, I see that I have a two point stroke on it. So I'm going to select my other boxes here. I'm going to go and apply a two-point stroke, so that way that kind of matches. Um, now, let's say I'm going to take this out here, and let's say I wanted to add some kind of paragraph or something. Well, that's where we would come over to the text tab. Now, when we look at the text tab, um, you'll see that, um, now when you first get into your account, you'll see that you have just some basic, you know, it just says body copy, you know, sport pages, headlines, these are all styles. Um, so with these styles, um, what they are is basically, this is how the text just starts as. So I'm gonna take this body copy, and I'm just gonna drag and drop it here. And all it does is dragging a style to a page. It just adds in whatever, you know, adds in a text box at that, you know, at that size. Now from here, I mean, that's just how it starts. So once it's on a page, you know, you can make your box you know, wider, deeper to kind of side, fit the area. Now just with your box selected, we'll look here up here to the toolbar that runs across the page. Okay, so if there's a toolbar here, and what we call the contextual toolbar, that when a particular element is selected, it changes to show its options. So once this text drops onto a page, it may start as this, but then from here, you're able to change it to any of the other fonts uh, that you have in your collection. You can change the style. Um, you can even change the format, you know, the color on that to a different color. So that's just how it could start. So you'd have more type all the way through here to leave like a text box of that. Okay. So, um, oh, I see what I'm doing. I'm messing with my browser. Sorry. Okay. So let's say that we have our template pretty much the way that we want it. And this is where we're gonna go and take it on throughout the rest of the pages. So if you formatted one of our templates or, or made your own, you want to save that as, you know, for, you know, to take to other places. You know, once you have it, do a file. We're going to do save as template. You'll get a prompt here to give it a name. And let's see, you can either select, you know, if you did the right side, you could then select left, or you could just do both here. And I'm just going to do my left side, hit save. Now any template that you save, and I'm gonna go back to the designs tab here, um, any template that you save yourself uh, will show up under custom. 
and it's going to show up under my templates. And here we go right here is Candid 101 is just what we made there. So I'm going to drop that on. Do I want to retain anything? No, nope, because I want that new template on there. And here we have our other template. Okay, um, so now that we got our template, let's start filling it in with some photos here. And a very good one that, that just popped up in the chat or it's been here for a second, but I wanted to wait to get to it till we got to this point is when you drop a picture into a template, does it auto size where you drag? Well, let's take a look at this. Um, so I'm gonna go back over to our images here and I'm gonna start dragging and dropping an image over. Now you'll see a um, couple different things. If your photo is high enough resolution, I mean, admit, I mean, it's the quality is, is high, if it has large pixel dimensions or just a larger photo in general. Um, if your photo box highlights green, that's gonna tell you that that photo is large enough resolution, um, has large enough size to fill that, that photo box. So if I let go, it's gonna auto fill into that box. Now, if I get a box that goes red, meaning that that photo box is too large for that photo, if I drop the photo, still go ahead and drop the photo, what the program will do will go ahead and add it to the page. Now it's, own, it's in its own smaller box now, but it does not go into the box you're trying to take it to. So it's still added, it just doesn't get added in because it did, didn't meet the size. Now, if we start to stretch this image out and kind of see why this one didn't go in, well, the photo meets, meets the width. So as far as size-wise, now I've got this photo stretched all the way out to its fullest. Um, one thing about our program, it's not gonna enlarge an image beyond its actual size. Um, so if you bring an image on and you start trying to pull and it won't go any further, you'll know that that, that image that is at its largest size. Uh, if you need it to be larger, at that point, you would need to try to find or, or be able to save out a higher higher resolution copy of that image or get, get one from somewhere. Um, now, if this one, this image, it meets the width. We just see that it's just a little short there. So it couldn't go in there. So green here is good. Green, you know, it's gonna place. Um, if it goes red, then you just know that that one doesn't have enough resolution to fill that spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some photos in here. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring my photos in. Okay, and there we go. Okay, quickly wanted to get those over. Can you pan over an image to center it? Well, kind of. Um, sorry, the, the, another question that hit the back is, can you pan over an image to center it? Well, one thing I was gonna show here is, you know, once you get your photos in, um, you know, if they don't quite hit in the box that you want to, are there cropping adjusting? And that, that we do have here. Um, so let's say you get a photo in, and I'm gonna work on a different example with these two. Um, kind of work on some of the other ones up here. So. If you need to crop an image, one thing you can do is if you select the image, there's a little crop icon up here at the top and you can activate the crop that way. So if you hit crop, you'll notice everything dims out around the image or around the photo box. The ghosted part of the photo here is what you can see or, or is what you can't see. If you need to enlarge an image that's in 
that's in the crop, grab the little handles you can pull out. And when you're done cropping, you can just click anywhere else off the page. Um, you can also just double click on your photos. And if you double click in the middle of it, it brings up the crop action as well. But yeah, you'll just double click. Now on some things, I was, um, you know, I could move this to the side. We gotta, I gotta put the cake back in view there, but work with your photos. But so yeah, you can select them and hit the crop or you can double click on them. And then you'll just kind of use the handles here to enlarge your photo. Um, the same as, as with photos on a page, um, you know, if you're in the crop mode and you're not able to make this any larger than that image is at, you know, you know your image is at full resolution there. Okay, so I'm going to hit save here. Okay, so we have our base template here on our page. We've got um, our photos in. So some other things, fun things we can do now is just going over. Maybe we want to, you know, play with some formatting. Maybe we want to start working on backgrounds and that. Well, let's let's take a look at backgrounds here. What we can do. Um, so for backgrounds. Um, I'm going to go under the art tab and I'll first introduce you to just this category right here, which is just background. Now this has all of um, just our generic backgrounds that are in this area here. Um, don't lend themselves to any theme. They're just, they're just here, just different multiple things. Some are pretty neat. Some can play in definitely to some of your themes there. So I'm just drag and drop one over and I'll apply it to a page. So there's some different neat things that are in here. Now, so anything in here just can apply by dragging and dropping it onto a page. And just dragging a different one over, we'll go ahead and you know reset what that is. They'll just replace it with the new, the other version. Now, what if you went with a specific cover or, you know, that, that maybe you went with one of school annuals covers and you want to see if there's theme art to go along with it. Or let's say that even if it's not theme art, what if you have your own backgrounds? Um, you know, what if you took images, you know, took pictures around the school and, and did something kind of artistic like a long hallway shot or maybe a playground shot and you're going to say you know I, I want to bring those into the program and use those as backgrounds I think would you know look really nice and uh, you know from past yearbooks it actually I mean that is a neat idea they do kind of look good if you bring them in uh, tint them stuff like that so how do you get to those other backgrounds or how do you get to work with those backgrounds that aren't here? Well, we're gonna come back, we're gonna go under edit and we're gonna go back to the change background menu. This little menu here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pick my left page here. We can flip to the other one and I'm just gonna remove what's here. Um, also at the top of the background, um, menu here is, is if you want to do just solid colors, you can pick the color background and it'll allow you just to do solid colors here if you like. I'm going to remove that. Now, um, where we'll go through here next for to find the theme backgrounds or to find your own, from the background, background menu, go under choose image. And I'm going to have a window here that pops up. I'm going to click down out here 
and here I'm going to close this up. So under here, uh, we have activity. Now, this would be if you uploaded your own images that you wanted to use as backgrounds, you would come through here. And let me go under activity cannons because I believe I have one that I just upload the test with here. Oh, there we go. So this background here, not part of the program. This is just something from outside the program that I like to bring in and test with. But listen, we're going to pretend that this is my own background that I brought in outside the program. Um, I'm going to you know, navigate to where it was. Just select it. I'm going to hit select and I'll apply it here to the page. Um, now, one thing kind of neat about this tool here also is if your backgrounds are coming in, let's say they're backgrounds that are just really robust with color and and maybe they're overpowering. Maybe the background is just taking away too much of the focus. What's you know what's really important here. So we do have a tent slider and that's going to help do that. So if we kind of back off the intensity of that background, we'll notice that as you tint it, as, as it gets lighter, you're actually pulling focus back to the foreground. So it makes those images pop and really kind of stand out a lot better. Go to the left page here, I'm gonna go back under choose image. And now let's say that you went with one of the covers and you're looking for the theme art for that. Um, for that, we're going to go back under the drop down. We're going to go under clip art. And we're going to look under by cover. Now, um, there, there are other stuff here under by category, by theme, by type that can, um, you know, that has backgrounds and stuff in it. You'll, you'll just use this background tool as well. Uh, but definitely, if you have time, check, check out some of the other stuff, see if it might play or work well with the book that you're putting together. But we're going to go under by cover here. And so we have things like 90s pop, angles, be awesome, uh, busy bees, all the different uh, school annual covers that we have here. So if we go under, I'm just going to put be awesome here. And if I go through, it has the different backgrounds that go with it. Here, so if I select one, I think this is just a solid, yeah. Pick a different one here. And let's just go to a different theme here. Okay, so school days. Here, I'm going to pick that one. Okay. So again, kind of how I was saying earlier, if you bring a background on, and it's just really robust with color, um, you know. So if we're going to lighten that up just a little bit, let's let's put it to 50 because we can keep track of that number. But when comparing the two pages, um, you'll see the images here on the right, since I lighten this background, they tend to pop out, they tend to stand out better um, than over here on this side where everything is all color, stuff is busy, stuff gets lost. Um, just remembered I had a photo down here, it gets kind of lost in this. Um, but if we start bringing that back here, I'm gonna make that 50. We'll then see all this kind of pops back forward and it's not lost in our background here. So definitely, um, you know, keep this tool around. Um, now, like I said, um, it can stay up, um, you know, it's just floats around, leave it around, but definitely great for choosing your theme art, your own work, doing solid color backgrounds. And let's see, well, um, have a little bit of time here. Um, so we can go over, I can go over just some simple formatting or just that we have or other things that you can see here. Um, so just like with your photos, um, you know, photo selected, we have different options here in the contextual toolbar. So I can change the stroke colors of those to yellow, you know, change the thickness of a stroke. So the higher the point number, the thicker the stroke will be. So you 
play with that, different coloring. Um, another thing that we can do here is I'm gonna select this image. Actually, I'm gonna select this one. We'll go under formatting. Here is where we got tint. You can even make your image see-through with transparency. We can light it up, lighten, lighten it up with tint here. Just here, let me unpin that so we can see here. So we can kind of tint it, lighten it up just a little bit, make it see-through. So that's really neat with certain shapes if you're doing kind of something uh, creative with shapes on the background and overlaying them like that. Drop shadow um, will give your images and that on the page just a little bit of depth. So it kind of looks like it's kind of lifted up off the page a little bit. You can also kind of change the coloring of that as well. Um, play with the distance, degree, what angle it's coming from. So definitely different for photo formatting stuff that is there. Now some other formatting you can do here is I'm gonna select the select a photo, um, go under snap edit. Snap edit will allow you to apply some filters here if you're working on some of your photos. Um, so you can take a photo, you can make it black and white if you wanted. A sepia tone, which kind of gives it the kind of the old western look in that. Um, we have overlay, colorize option. Um, we'll say that really light colors kind of kind of blow it out a little bit, but if you go with darker colors, darker colors kind of tend to work better with that tool. Um, you can adjust the brightness of your photo, contrast, saturation, play with some levels. Um, now one little neat thing um, I've found you can also kind of um, overlap some of these. Whereas overlay, you can still see it has other color that's in here. I like to pair that up with the black and white. That way it just makes it all that kind of shade. It's kind of like the colorize option, but a little bit cleaner. So again, you can apply a couple different formatting that's there. All right, so once you've um, gone through, let's say you've edited a photo here, um, when you go ahead and hit save, and what I'll do is I'll save that copy here onto the page. Now I'm gonna go over to the designs tab here. And um, one thing you'll see is it always keeps the original. So anytime you do any of the snap edit editing or the formatting like that to your photos, um, you'll always have the original to go back to. Um, what it's doing, it saves a copy here in the, um, in the same folder as the original. So that way you always have the original go back to in case um, you know you just want to use that without any effects or anything. All right, and here. So we've gone through that. We've gone through some formatting. Um, one of the last things that we usually kind of cover over here, um, and this is only for those that, that will have the advisor log in, um, is kind of what to do if you ever need to recover a page. Um, so if you're working on your book and let's say that after you get, let's say that, that you got the template on, you've got the base formatting there, um, then you want to kind of start playing around. Here, I'm going to go back to fit. All right. So we've got a lot done here, right here, but let's say that we want to take this back to a time before we did any formatting in that. Um, the program has a history tab here and it keeps track of each and every save change for each and every, um, each and every save for each and every page, really. Um, so what I want to do is, let's say I wanted to go back to a start before I started putting photos in or had the background and everything. Well, if I come to the history tab, I can actually go all the way through and each time I save this page, I can see, well, 
here was this and you know maybe I wanted to go back before I started playing formatting. I'm just gonna drop that on. And then you can pick up at this point and start all, you know, start formatting all over. Or, you know, we can go back further to where it was just that. We can go back to when we are arranging elements. Or we can go back to where we started. So, um, just definitely while you're working on your pages, um, make sure to save, save often. Um, you have those restore points in case you need to either redo something or let's say that, you know, you got up to a certain formatting point, point and you're just like, I think I may have gone overboard or, okay, I did this. Now the people that, you know, maybe your principal didn't like how certain backgrounds or like certain formatting, whatever the reason, maybe if you just need to go back just to start the formatting over, you know, definitely use the history, um, history tool here. Um, save often that way. Uh, can you set a save every two minutes or something like that in case you get interrupted? Um, now there's not anything like an auto save in here. Um, now the program will ask you if you want to save before you jump to another page. Um, so here I've got it lit up. So if I were to go to another page, would you like to save changes? Yes. Um, now one thing it is, I'm going to move this around here. If I want to go to another spot in the program, it may ask you if you, you know, give you a heads up that your changes will not be saved. but um, no, there's not a way to set a, a set a set a set time. So um, just be sure, yeah. Every every few minutes while you're working, hit save. That way, you just have the the latest latest progress. Um, what I'll probably do now, um, we've kind of gone through everything that we were going to go through with the the bleeds and margins basics, going on how you can go over templates, adding backgrounds and some formatting. Um, have a few minutes here uh, left. Um, normally we open this up um, for everyone that, that has joined us. Um, so if you're still here, if you still have questions, um, feel free. Um, I've got a few minutes. I can help answer any of the questions that we have about today's topic. For one second, Lucas. Yes. Hi, this is Michelle. I'm calling from Los Angeles. It's my first time working on a yearbook. Um, you made everything look really easy, so props to you. At the beginning, you reminded us that this was rescheduled call because of weather, but you said that there was another call that had been recorded. I think I need to back up and watch that one. Can you get me the recording? I I can. Um, it it's just the same thing. Oh, we, it's the we, same as today. It's the same as today's. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't need to see it twice. Okay. <laughs> I thought there was a new topic that I missed. No, no. We do the we do the same topic on Tuesday and Thursday just to, for just to make you know cover bases. Make sure everybody yeah. you know depending you know certain yeah. people can't make the same day. But no, anything Got in it. that previous recording is. It's nothing new to what we've done today. Perfect. Um, Thank you very much. Is this one recorded? Yes, he's going to send yep. this later. Yep, this one's recorded too. And um, normally I like to get these posted on uh, Friday and get the links out then. But being this is a makeup, I'll probably, probably kind of get this one up and out to everybody by tomorrow. Today's working. All right, cool. Okay. Um, well, here I'm not. Uh, I just have a, a the the couple here on and nothing else in the chat. So um, if we are if we're good on questions, um, well, guess we'll go ahead and wrap it up for today. Um, but no, very very um, you know, 
appreciate anyone that that was able to join jump on today thank you very much for joining me um, you know, hopefully these demonstrations um, of the functions related to the creation of activity pages uh, may help when it comes time to build your year, build your yearbook. Um, using the templates already in the program and building your own templates should save you some time and give a book continuity. Um, so feel free to join us next week. Um, we're going to go over the final steps of the yearbook building process. We're going to go over how you review pages and how you get those submitted and sent in to us. So again, thank you very much for joining me today and um, have a great rest of your afternoon. So thank you. Thank you.